Hey there, tech enthusiasts. Virtual machines can feel like a tricky concept to wrap your head around, but they're incredibly useful, whether you're testing software, learning new operating systems, or building isolated environments for development. Two of the best free options out there are VirtualBox and VMware Workstation Player. But which one should you choose? Today, we're diving into an in-depth comparison to help you decide. VirtualBox and VMware Workstation Player are both well-known tools in the world of virtualization. VirtualBox is open-source software developed by Oracle, meaning it's free and built by a community of developers. VMware Workstation Player, on the other hand, is part of VMware's broader virtualization suite, designed for personal and small-scale use. Both tools allow you to create and run virtual machines on your Windows PC, but their origin stories shape their key differences. VirtualBox is feature-packed right out of the box, while VMware prioritizes performance, stability, and user experience. Let's break down what each has to offer. First up, features. VirtualBox offers a comprehensive set of tools for free. For example, you get access to snapshots, which let you save the current state of your virtual machine. It's a lifesaver if you're experimenting with new software or making risky changes. You can restore your VM to a stable state with just a click. On the other hand, VMware locks features like snapshots and advanced networking options behind its Workstation Pro license, which is a paid upgrade. VirtualBox also supports a wider range of virtual disk formats, like VDI, VMDK, VHD, and HDD, making it more versatile when working with files from other virtualization tools. VMware sticks primarily to VMDK. However, VMware makes up for this by offering granular control over hardware allocation. You can configure advanced settings like 3D graphics acceleration, allocate more video memory, and even enable features like Unity mode. VirtualBox offers some of these features, but they're not as polished or flexible. So, for pure versatility, VirtualBox takes the crown here. When it comes to performance, both VirtualBox and VMware deliver solid results, especially for casual use or small-scale projects. If you're running just one virtual machine, you won't notice a huge difference between the two. But VMware shines when you start scaling up. Let's say you're running multiple VMs simultaneously or pushing resource-intensive tasks like video rendering or machine learning. VMware's stability and snappy responsiveness stand out. I've personally tested both tools, using VirtualBox for web development and VMware for multitasking with larger projects. VirtualBox holds its ground well, but VMware consistently feels smoother, especially on lower-end hardware. If performance is your priority, VMware Workstation Player is the way to go. Both tools come with extension packs to improve usability. VMware uses VMware tools, while VirtualBox has guest additions. These extensions add features like drag and drop file sharing between your host and virtual machine, a shared clipboard so you can easily copy and paste text, better screen resolution support. While both tools have these features, VMware's extensions are more reliable. With VMware tools, installation is straightforward and issues are rare. VirtualBox's guest additions can be hit or miss. Sometimes they don't work right away, even after installation, requiring a bit of troubleshooting. On the usability front, VMware also pulls ahead. Its interface is beginner-friendly, with clearly labeled options and helpful tooltips. VirtualBox, on the other hand, offers a more detailed interface. While it's great for advanced users, beginners might feel overwhelmed by the abundance of options. So, if you're new to virtualization, VMware wins this round. When it comes to compatibility, VirtualBox has the upper hand. You can run VirtualBox on a variety of host operating systems, including Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Solaris, and FreeBSD. VMware Workstation Player, by contrast, supports only Windows and Linux. But let's focus on virtual machines running on Windows systems, since that's our main topic today. Both tools perform well on Windows, but VirtualBox offers more flexibility if you ever switch to another OS. Now, what about running Mac OS VMs? Here's where things get tricky. VirtualBox supports Mac OS VMs with some effort, while VMware doesn't offer native Mac OS support, even in its paid version. Now, the all-important question. How much will this cost you? Both tools are free for personal use, but there's a catch. VirtualBox is open source, but its extension pack is only free for personal or educational use. Businesses need a paid license. VMware Workstation Player is free for students, nonprofits, and home users, 
but you'll need to upgrade to Workstation Pro for commercial use or advanced features. In short, if you're on a budget and need something flexible, VirtualBox might be the better deal. Alright, let's sum it up. If you're an experimenter who loves free features and doesn't mind troubleshooting, VirtualBox is the tool for you. It's versatile, packed with features, and perfect for testing new software or playing around with different configurations. But if you're looking for performance, stability, and ease of use, VMware Workstation Player is the better choice. It's reliable, polished, and perfect for resource-intensive tasks or running multiple VMs smoothly. So, what do you think? Are you Team VirtualBox or Team VMware? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel for more tech reviews and tips. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay tech savvy.